Today you're going to learn how to immediately improve your guitar solos and phrasing with a technique called backslides. Now this one little guitar trick is simple, but very few guitar players really know about it or use it. It's really awesome and it makes any ordinary lick sound a lot better right away. You'll be amazed at how quickly backslides make your guitar solo sound better when tastefully used in the right places. Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and I've taught this guitar soloing technique to thousands of my online guitar students, and today I want to help you. First, I'll show you what backslides are and what they aren't, and then how to play them, and then I'll show you how to integrate the backslide technique with other techniques. So let's get started. So let's define what a backslide is, and I'm going to do that by first telling you what it is not. A backslide is not a descending slide, okay? This is not a backslide. That's just a descending slide, which also sounds cool, but that's something else. A backslide is what happens when you play a note, you slide away from that note, and then you immediately slide right back to the note that you started on. For example, if I start here on B, slid up to C sharp, and then I'm sliding right back to B. So backslides always have two parts. You slide away from the note and then you slide right back to where you were. Now a backslide can go up and then down like this. So I'm sliding up and away from the note and then right back down. You can also do it the other way where you play the note, in this case B, and you slide down and then right back up to B. That's a backslide and so is that. Now backslides sound good pretty much anywhere in any lick, all right? They're a wonderful ornament to you. So anytime you're playing a lick or a phrase and a note is going to be ringing out for a, for a moment and maybe you would, you know, bend it or do vibrato there normally or whatever, you can do a backslide instead of vibrato or a string bend. Or you can do a backslide in combination with string bends or vibrato as I did a little bit earlier. <laughs> So instead of just holding this note out and doing vibrato on it, which sounds cool, with the backslide in front of it, and then vibrato, it's just got a little bit more life to it. And it's a little bit different than the things that we normally do as guitar players. You play a note and you play some nice vibrato and that's the end. Well, with the backslide, you, you had now a new technique. It's a, it's a new sound, a new feel. Before we get started with the very first example here, if you want to learn more ways to improve your guitar soloing, check out my video on YouTube called Phrasing Guitar Lesson, How to Improve Your Phrasing. It'll give you a lot of cool tips that will sound good in combination with everything we're going to be doing today in this video. All right, let's take a listen to this first example. There's a backslide integrated with the bend, and you'll hear how this sounds pretty nice. All right, so with just basically two notes, right, B and C sharp, we have a nice little phrase, nice small phrase. We're not doing a lot, but it sounds really cool. All right, so one quick uh, tip here about the bend. When I do the backslide, I'm not bending all the way up to C sharp. All right, I intentionally don't give the listener the full bend. So this would normally be a whole step bend from B to C sharp. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna stop short and then then I'll go up to the C sharp and then hit it, you know, with nice vibrato. Sounds a little bit more dramatic that way when you don't allow the bend to go all the way up and then you smack down on that C sharp note and it sounds really cool. All right, this next example is a double backslide. Simply it's a phrase that has two backslides in it. So let's take a listen.
All right, so what we have here is a backslide on the first note, a slow bend, and then we've got a backslide on the note we want to end up on, which is C sharp. First backslide, slow bend, but not all the way up. We do a backslide from C sharp to D sharp to C sharp, and then lay down the vibrato real thick at the end. And it sounds cool. Now before we get into the next set of really cool guitar licks, you might want to check out another video I made recently on YouTube called Guitar Solo Lesson, Improve Your Phrasing Immediately. This is not the same video I referenced a few minutes ago. This will help you use the backslides with the other things we're going to be talking about now in combination with some other techniques. So that video in combination with this one will give you a lot more out of what you're about to see. All right, this next example, I'm gonna play basically just a minor pentatonic box uh, shape scale that I'm sure you're familiar with. But we're gonna do a backslide away from the scale and come right back up to it on each string. So check this one out. So again, all I'm really doing here is I'm playing a basic minor pentatonic scale up here on the ninth fret. I'm in the key of C sharp minor. Okay. And I'm playing the top two notes on the high E string. And then I'm just sliding down to the next note that would be in the minor pentatonic scale on the first string, which would be here, fret number seven, coming right back up. And I'm only picking the very first note. Then we have the exact same pattern on the next string. And then the pattern changes a little bit. We're still playing the minor pentatonic scale. Um, when you get to string three, it's 11th fret, 9th fret, now all the way to six, back to nine. Okay, so you got F sharp and E, C sharp, E, and then you got the same thing on the next string. can end it there on the uh, 11th fret, C sharp note. And you can do it, you know, whatever speed you want. It sounds good slow too. Or you could speed it up or do whatever speed you like, but it's a really cool sound. And it's not the typical, you know, box pattern licks because we're doing these backslides on each string as we move to the, before we move to the next string. In this next example, I'll be doing the minor pentatonic scale, but I'll be doing backslides on the highest note of each string. So let's see what that sounds like. Sounds good, slow too, one more time. All right, so again, what we have here is simply the minor pentatonic scale. Backslide on the highest note. And a backslide here. Now here we slide only to the 13th fret. On this string, we're gonna go all the way up to E, 14th fret. Same thing here on the A string. It sounds really cool. And you can do this, of course, with any scale. It just shows one that's probably most familiar to most people. It sounds really nice at a medium speed or a slow speed or a fast speed. So example five uses a scale called the Hirajashi scale. It's actually a mode of a Hirajashi scale here. And it sounds really cool. Uh, you can play it in strict time or you can use rubato with it. It sounds really nice. Let's check this out. Either way, it sounds good. You can speed it up or just you know play it slow as I did in the beginning. Now, when you're doing this, some of the bend or some of the slides actually uh, have you know are, are big. So this one's not too big in the beginning. You can slide up to 11 or 12. You're sliding up from nine to 10. 
six to seven. Now on this string, we're sliding with the middle finger from fret seven up to 11. So it's a big, it's big for a back slide. Same thing there. The low E string has no back slide. Really cool sound. Now, if you want to check out more about this this mode, this Hirajashi scale, and that if you like that sound, I've created another video just on this set of modes and a bunch of licks, Hirajashi licks. You might want to check that out. So, what we're going to do now in example number six is I'm going to play for you a technique that I call backslide chains, and these are really really cool, and they sound great. So, all we're going to do is we're going to play the we're going to pick the very first note. And then after that, we're just going to play backslide after backslide after backslide, all daisy chains together, all legato. So let's give this a shot and let's see what it sounds like. One more time. All right, so let's break this down. Again, we've got a C-sharp minor scale on string number two. I'm starting here on the E note, picking that note, then doing a back slide. So sliding from 17 to 19, right back to 17. And then from here, we're gonna slide down from 17 to 16. Okay, then we do a back slide here. We're gonna slide down to 14, do a back slide here. 12th fret, same thing, 10th fret. 9th fret, 7, 5, 4, 2, etc. Okay? So don't think about this. Don't try and memorize all the notes. Okay? Don't think, okay, 17, 19, 17, 16, 17, 16. Don't do that. You can, but you're wasting a lot of your time. Instead, just visualize the scale on one string. Okay, so you got the scale of one string, and just say to yourself, okay, I'm going to start on this note, just do a backslide to the next note higher, then the next note, then the next note, backslide, and go down on each one, and do a backslide, staying in key, of course, so sometimes you're sliding one fret, sometimes you're sliding two frets, depending upon, you know, where the notes are in the scale. And in the end, it sounds really nice, you can use this anywhere. Example number seven is what I call an arpeggio backslide chain. And all I'm doing here is I'm taking the notes of an E major arpeggio, E, G sharp, and B, and I'm going to do a backslide on each one of them. All right, so let's break this down. Again, what I'm doing here is I'm outlining an E major arpeggio, notes E, G sharp, and B. So we've got an E note right here, just doing a backslide. Now, how did I choose this note? It's simply the next note higher in the scale, in, in the key of E, or in this case, C-sharp minor. Then our next note of the arpeggio is G-sharp. So you slide up from G-sharp to A, because A is the note that's in the key. Next note in an E arpeggio is B. So we're sliding from 12th fret to 14, or B to C-sharp. Next, we've got B, I'm sorry, E. So we've got E, F sharp, E. And then we have G sharp, A, G sharp. Then we've got B, C sharp, B. And then on this guitar, I can slide from 24 to 26, but on your guitar, you may not have more than 24 frets, and that's fine. So you can get the same feeling by playing 24 then bend up a whole step and then come back down. And then you've got your backslide change. It's really cool. You can use this for any arpeggio, anywhere, any song, any style, any key, it's awesome. So let's hear it one more time. Let's talk about how to practice this stuff. So I'm often asked among the students that I teach online, whenever I teach this technique, they wanna know, which finger should you use when you're doing the backslides or you're practicing the backslides? Well, the answer is it depends. 
What does it depend on? It depends upon the lick or the phrase that you're adding the backslide to. So if you have an example like this, you want to do a backslide on that note. It doesn't make sense to use the fourth finger there or the third finger there. It only really makes sense to use the first finger. If you have something that goes like this, you're going to end here and then do a backslide here. It only makes sense to use that finger because that's the note you would play that, that's the finger you would play that note with anyway. So don't change anything. Don't, don't make a rule where you only do backslides with the middle finger or the first finger or whatever because then you've got to do goofy things in order to apply the, but we don't want to do that. All right, just use common sense. If you're using the fourth finger anyway, that's the finger you're going to do the backslide with. There are four pillars of guitar mastery that let just about anyone play guitar as well as they want. It's not a magic pill, but I've used these four pillars with hundreds of students who now play guitar at very advanced levels. Many of them often practice guitar less than one hour a day, but because they know exactly what to do and exactly how to do it, and they've got the guidance along the way to maximize their practice, they grow like crazy. Their guitar playing advances very quickly. I'll share these four pillars with you for free right now in my new ebook called Guitar Mastery Decoded. Now, when you download this now for free, you'll learn four steps to worry free guitar playing, a nine step checklist for bulletproof guitar technique. You'll learn how to stop playing the same things over and over and over again, and finally put it all together in your guitar playing. You'll learn how to cram hours of progress into a 20 minute high intensity guitar practice session and not have your brain explode, okay? So go to tomhess.net slash guitar mastery decoded and download your copy right now. It's totally free. If you liked this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, click on the notification bell so that YouTube tells you when I publish a new video and hit that like button. I created this video based on a request made by one of you on another YouTube video. About half of the videos that I create for YouTube are made by request. So if you have a topic you'd like me to make a new video on, let me know in the comments below. I read every single one.